I was recently asked to share the settings that I used to carve out this Kato sign. This sign was made out of plywood and I had multiple toolpaths. So if you're interested in seeing multiple toolpaths being run on plywood, you're gonna wanna stick around. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Edgar with AE Timber and Pine. And like I said, this Kato sign was carved on plywood and I used three toolpaths. I used two advanced V carves and one contour toolpath. And even though there were only three toolpaths run, I think it's a very good example to see multiple uses of an advanced V carve and also how to use the contour toolpath. The first advanced V carve is very straightforward. You just use an end mill to clear out some material and then you use the V bit to clean up the actual design. That's very straightforward. The second advanced V carve is a tip that I wanna share with you and it's going to allow you to use the advanced V carve to carve small text. So you're gonna to wanna to stick around for that portion of the video. And lastly, the contour toolpath, which is great to know because you're able to use it to carve out shapes from larger pieces of material. And I'm gonna show you how to use tabs. It's very simple. So if that's also something that you're interested, in, you're gonna to wanna to stick around for that portion of the video. And before we get into the video, I wanna give a shout out to Timothy S for becoming our very first patron. Thank you so much, Timothy. I really do appreciate the support. If you are getting value out of the content and like the content, make sure to like, subscribe, and share the channel. Leave me a message in the comments, even if it it is an emoji. It all helps out with the algorithm. All right, guys. So let's just go ahead and jump into Carbide Create. All right, guys. So jumping into Carbide Create. First off, I apologize about the sound. I'm currently sitting in a waiting room, so it's very echoey. But I think for the purpose of this video and getting you guys some toolpath samples, I think it should be more than sufficient. Uh, but again, I apologize for any echo. I'll try to fix it in the post production part of you know editing. For this particular project, I carved it out on some scrap plywood. And so it is considered softwood. And so go ahead with, with whatever design that you may be working with and, um, and whatever it is that you're trying to carve on plywood or softwood, you can definitely start off with these, these numbers, these inputs, um, because they seem to work out for me and I seem to repeat these exact same values and settings every single time. So unless I need to slow it down, I really just keep with these numbers and these seem to work well for me. When I start with a project like this that's going to have multiple toolpaths, I like to split it up in different sections. So I, have, I like to have different sections for the different toolpaths. So for example, you can see that I have all this here highlighted. This is gonna be one toolpath. This text down here is going to be another toolpath. And then this circle here is going to be its own toolpath all by itself. So let me just go ahead and show you the, the toolpaths that I used to run this project. The very first toolpath that I ran was the logo or what I call the logo, which is gonna be this uh, sky portion, the mountain peaks, the officer here, and the, and the letters for the logo or for the organization. So let's take a look at those settings real quick. I used a 201 end mill, the quarter inch end mill, and the plunge and feed rate were 80, 90 RPM at 18,000. Again, guys, those seem to be the ones that work for me, so I stick with it because I don't wanna really uh, change it and, and ruin, ruin anything. Um, I think it works slow enough, but fast enough to get good cuts. I do want to enable the pocket tool area first to allow for this um, quarter inch end mill to be used. If I don't have it, then I can't use it. So I need to go ahead and select it. The pocket tool will do all it can with the quarter inch end mill and what it can't carve, it'll carve out with the 60 degree V bit and I'm using the exact same settings, 80, 90, 18,000. And my max depth, you gotta set a max depth for your advanced V carve, is going to be at 0 0.04 inches. That is my favorite max depth. That is more than enough to be able to get the paint or stain off and give you a good image. And go ahead and name it whatever you'd like. In this case, I named it logo. Once that is done, I went ahead and disabled that and then I moved over to the text. The reason why I did a separate toolpath is because this is smaller text. This is a lot smaller than this logo. So what I did is I still did an, I still did an advanced V-carve toolpath, but the pocket tool that I'm using is the 1 8 end mill. The settings are the same, plunge rate at 80, feed rate 90, RPM at 18,000, and the V-bit is still the 60 degree V-bit that is gonna come back in here and clean it up. What I think happened, and I apologize because it's been a few months now since I actually performed this uh, job, is that the letters were still so small that the 1 8 end mill did not get used and it went directly to the 60 degree V bit. So this is actually something that you wanna keep in mind that if you have small text and you want to have a flat bottom rather than a V carve, for example, rather than V carve text, but you still want a flat bottom, go ahead and still use the advanced V carve and enable, you have to still enable the pocket tool to allow for the V carve to just do the, the, the carving basically. 
So if you have small text and you know that your one eighth end mill is bigger than that small text, but you still need a way to figure out how to get that text carved, try this out. Use an advanced V carve, enable the pocket tool because the text is smaller than the one eighth end mill or what the one eighth end mill can get to, it'll still carve with the 60 degree V bit and it'll still be a flat bottom. So just keep that in mind guys. And so I, if I recall correctly, that's what happened for this one. And just to keep everything proportional, the max depth is also 0 0.04. And I named this text. One thing that I forgot to mention earlier, when I initially carved this at the 0 0.04, the material must have not been flat or I may not have secured it properly on the waste board. But you're going to see that the sky up here did not carve completely. There was still some stain left over. So I went ahead and just carved the sky again. And I changed the max depth to 0 0.03. So how did, how did I fix it? What I ended up doing is I reset my Z0 in just this general area where there was still some stain left over. By doing that, I am now ensuring that the stain is going to be removed. And because I set my Z0 there, just to play it safe, just to be conservative, I changed the max depth to 0 0.03. Everything else remained the same. Still the quarter inch end mill, 80, 90, 18,000 for everything else, just as before, except I just changed my Z0 to be within the sky vector, and also I changed my max depth to be 0 0.03. And so I named that sky only. Once everything else within this circle or the logo was complete and I was happy with it, the last thing to do was to carve this out from the larger piece of material because it needed to be a circle. And so I used a contour toolpath. I used my quarter inch end mill and everything again is the same, 80, 90, 18 thousandths. Those are, those are my values that I think work best for me. If you have any values that you like that you stick to with pine or plywood, definitely share it with me. I, I, I'm always looking for ways to improve. But with that said, the cutting depth that you want, the max depth that you want, excuse me, is going to be 0.75, the thickness of your material. So in this case, it was three quarter inch plywood. I want to cut through the entire piece of material. One thing that you are definitely going to want to update here when you carve something out is your offset direction. Typically when you carve something out from larger pieces of material, you're going to want to select outside right but you do have different offset directions. The offset with the outside right direction is going to allow for the tool path or the tool to be on the outside or carve on the outside of your vector. If you were to select inside left, the end mill is going to carve within the outside vector or your vector, so it'll carve within. And if you have no offset, it will just carve right on the line. And so because I do want the entire circle at the size that I set it up as, I'm going to select outside right, and this is going to allow for the end mill to carve on the outside of the vector, giving me the entire size circle. One thing I did forget to mention is prior to executing your contour toolpath, you do want to have some tabs set up. So go ahead and select your outermost vector, whatever that is that you're going to carve out, and you're going to have that selected and click on this square here where this is going to be the edit tabs option and you're going to be able to then click on your vector and add these tabs wherever you'd like. This is going to allow for your piece that you want to cut out to be held in place on your larger piece of material that it is carved, being carved out from so they won't fly out as it's carving out because once you start getting down really low and it's almost carved out it, it has a tendency to move because of how fast the router bit is spinning and also it has a tendency of eventually just shooting that piece out. So you definitely want to have some tabs in your workpiece unless you have some other methods such as double-sided tape. I know some folks that use double-sided tape to secure their pieces or super glue. I haven't had success with that so I prefer to use tabs. Use whatever method you'd like. Also one last thing prior to executing your job you want to make sure that you take a look at the simulation and here is the simulation after it is all said and done. We have a good sky here according to our simulation and the text is looking good. And you can see here that we have the tabs that are going to secure our circle to the larger piece of material. It looks good here in the simulation, but one last thing that you have to make sure that you do correctly is set up your X, Y, and Z zeros. Make sure that those are set up correctly. And once you have everything set up, go ahead and run it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the video clips of this actually being performed. And I'll show you a real-time explanation of when I ran into the issue with the sky portion not carving correctly. So let's go ahead and take a look at those now.
As you can see here, it's not carving all the way as it should or completely as it should. The material must be lower here than it is over here. So I reset my Z0 here in this general area and I went back to Carbide Create and I reduced the max depth. So I went to 0 0.03 rather than 0 0.04. It may not seem like much, but I just felt like maybe not carving as deep in this general area. So just to kind of try to keep it proportional, not having a big deep carve here, and then everything is kind of shallow over here to the to the other side. So that's just what I did. It's all preference. I just wanted to share the thought process that I had during this carve. All right, guys, let's go back to the carve. That's one way to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and were able to take something away from it. I'll see you guys on the next one.